Welcome to There Is Hope. Any advice or counsel given is provided for informational purposes only. Your host for There Is Hope, Richard Dover. Uh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with us, and uh, this is a Bible study on Psalms 116. As you take a look at uh, going through troubles, trials, heartache, sorrow, depression, probably suicidal thoughts, all that, feeling hopeless, and you coming through. You showing your mercy, you doing the, the, the rescuing out of the pit, and uh, all we have left to do is to give you praise and give you honor, and and I think this uh, applies to so many of us at different times in our life when we're going through something, and so, Lord, I pray that it not only speak to Bobby and I as we do this Bible study, but for whoever may be tuning in later, and we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, in Psalm... Uh, 116, um, the, the whole of psalm is exactly what I just said is in the midst of prayer, what it's about. And it'll be very obvious as we uh, look at it. We're going to be in verse 4. I'm going to be verses 1 through 3 just uh, so we get to our context and we'll get into verse 4. It says, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. Because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. Death wraps its ropes around me. The terrors of the grave overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. So we'll stop right there. Uh, you look at verse 3. Is, is, it, is it very clear that the writer is probably in the pit? Sounds like it. <laughs> and, and, and probably in, in, a, in a bad situation. Uh, we don't know what that bad situation is, but uh, in a bad situation. But it's saying terror and everything took over. The grave took over. I mean, it... it it, it's like there's no way out. But look what he does in verse 3. A lot of times, I want to get the context because verse 4 gives us the answer. A lot of times when people are in, in that situation, the last thing they do is what? Call out to God. The, the, last, the last thing they do is to call a friend to get help. Instead, they run into whatever it is. Their, 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 their um, the sin that so easily entangles them, a run of alcohol, drugs. Um, go hide in the corner someplace, uh, feel like God isn't there, so why would I call out to God? I mean, he's letting me go through this pit, so why would I call out to him? Does, does that make sense? Well, that's actually pretty incredible that we're on here. I just was thinking, you know, think, just thinking about what you said, and it's like that's all I wanted, wanted to do right now is, is crawl in a corner. You know, I'm just in, I'm in that mode of, you know, I don't feel hope right now. I don't feel... I just feel like I'm wandering, you know, I, I don't, a lot of bad stuff is going through my head and it's like, yeah. I did not want to call out to God. I didn't feel like it. I was, I'm almost mad at him for some reason. <laughs> like, yeah. n- nothing happened, but I'm definitely disconnected. And that's the last thing I was going to do is call out to God. So. Yeah. See, that's, that, that's the whole, whole deal is, and, and of course who's behind that is Satan himself. Cause he, cause he knows the rest of the story, right? He knows if he can stop us from calling out to God and we can get us to a pity party, not talk to anybody, do whatever, then he's got us. Because he knows if we start making phone calls, we start talking to people, if we call out to God, we'll get out of the funk. We'll get out of what we're in. So he's got he's to keep us in that pit. And when we're in the pit, what we have to do is make the decision, I can't physically get out of this pit. I can't physically get out of the, the what I'm going through. But I can at least point out and say help and if we say help and we call out to God for help he's going to help us now it may not be two seconds later that's the other issue right we call out for God for help but he doesn't show up because he doesn't show up when we want him to right uh, he, he, he gets to show up when he wants to because he he's doing something in the midst of all this he's doing something in us and, and how dare us tell him to work on our time frame on on anything. So this is the this is the thing is that the, I mean you know when you I, I should have spoke up earlier but um, you know we talked about this last week too. It doesn't necessarily mean that the writer here is in a bad place right now, right? Um, right. It, it means that you know he's had some experience in this. Yeah, when we, when we get through this again, we don't you know we're only in the first four four verses. So when we get through it, we'll realize this is all past tense stuff. Right, right. And so that's that's the other good news. This guy made it. So if he made it through it, 
we can make it through it. I mean, isn't that the whole story about when you talk about recovery or or uh, a life being transformed is because there's others that have made it, and then so we can relate to them that if they may have made it, then maybe we can. So then if you look at verse 4, it says, Then I called in the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. Right there, that stops, and it's going to go to something else. Right there, at that moment, there's only one thing he did. He called out to God and he said, Lord, save me. Ask for help. Ask for help. Does not say he prayed for two hours? Does not say he, he, he uh, you know, fasted for ten days? He just cried out to help. Now, the other thing I want to make sure I get this clear, this is not a formula. There is no formula. So if I just do exactly what happened in, in, in Psalms 116, it will work for me. Uh, no, it probably won't work for you because you want to make it a formula. And, and uh, everybody's story is different, but there's principles. So he says, then I called out on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. Verse 5, how kind the Lord is. How good is he, so merciful, this God of ours. The Lord protects those of childlike faith. I was facing death, and he saved me. We have no idea what went on between the time he called out to God to when he says uh, the Lord is good and merciful. So did he call out to God, and then immediately God intervened? We have no idea. This is all we know. God intervened. Rich, I have a, a slightly different uh, translation, but I, I just, Go ahead. whatever. Yeah, it. It. <laughs> it says, gracious is the Lord and, and righteous. Yes, our God is compassionate. I love this line right here. It says, the Lord watches over the simple. I was brought low and he saved me. That makes me want to cry. Yeah, that's good. What's your, you, don't, you don't know what translation it is, right? Yeah, I'm in um, <clears throat> New American Standard. Okay. Translation. The Living Translation because it's easier reading and because it's more simple reading. And, and if you know me, I'm a New American Standard guy. And you read this read the New American Standard, and there, there's one of the reasons why I like the New American Standard. So, uh, but so it says I'm I uh, he's with this simple. So my translation says child like faith, and you put he's with the simple. Um, why, why does that make you cry? Why, what, what is it about that when you read that that touched you? Well, it's just, it's so humbling. You know, I mean, it's saying that gracious is the Lord and righteous and that, you know, yes, our God is compassionate and the Lord watches over the simple. And, and so, I mean, I, I you know, I, I've come to, to, to take that humble pie and just, I mean, I understand what I'm going through right now is nothing. Nothing has happened. There's nothing bad in my life. There's, there's, it's literally just <clears throat> some ridiculous reason. What for whatever reason, I'm just super depressed, you know. And it's like there's nothing going on. And and you know, I mean, I was brought right. low, and and he saved me. And it's like I've been here before. And I realized that. I mean, just think about that word simple. I mean, I mean, that's all I that's that's all I am. It's like this this one person in this gigantic universe, you know. And it's it, it's I, I don't want to say, I mean, it's almost like I'm nothing, you know? I mean, it's just, I'm just but, this little so, thing. So think about this, Bobby. God, it says that God is the righteous one, right? He's right. righteous. That means he's holy. That means he's perfect. That means he's a lot better than me and you. Right. Now, if me and you, quote, if we if we had our own type of righteousness, our stipulation is you're a piece of dirt compared to me, and now way am I going to help you? Do you not know how righteous I am? Right. You thought I know how good I am, and you want me to bow down to you? And so, um, and, and earlier it says that God bowed down. So out of it, you look at it, so then what happens is, and that other idea about simple is, is to realize not only that the, the humbleness of it, but I don't have to have any answers right now. Right, right. Because that's your struggle, right? Right. Why you're going through what you're going through. And what it's saying is you don't have to have an answer. Right. And that's precious. That's amazing. Especially when, if you're the type that has to have the answers. 
Right. What am I going through? Let me just figure it out. Let me work every program I know and do everything I know to do to figure out what the reason I am in here. And he's saying, no, I'm just with you. Just be simple. Just throw your hands up and say, you know what? I don't yep. go I need you. That's super powerful. Super, super powerful. I spent a long time in, in my, my early walk with God and, um, you know, thank goodness I've kind of, um, I, I, I don't want to say grow, grown past that, but um, I've been through this enough times where I have some experience right here. And, and what you described about wrestling around, trying to figure it out and trying to, I mean, it's hard and it takes an emotional toll. It's, it's laborious. It's, it's a real struggle, and, and and when you when I do that, you know that, that's that's not really turning into God. That's completely running on self, and and we've already gone through many many a, a lot about dying to self, you know. And and when I'm relying on myself, you know, I mean, I'm 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 not simple. I'm I'm putting giving myself too much power, and it's super super hard. And, and normally you're not going to get the answer you're looking for anyway. Never, never. Because that, cause that's not that's not why he's taking you through what you're going through. Right. And, and that's why I say, again, we don't know how long that the, the author went through, they went through, but we know there was a purpose. And here's the whole thing. Uh, a lot of times what we're going through, there is an answer to what it is. He just wants to make us simple. He wants us to get back to the basics. Right. He wants us to trust him. He wants us just to say, okay, I throw my hands up and, I don't know what's going on, but God, I love you. All right. To me. I won't abandon you, God. I don't know what you're doing. I don't like it. I'm not running from you. I may I may I may hide out in the closet for a little while from you, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna, you know, leave you. So then it says, So the Lord protects the those of the child like faith. I was facing death and he saved me, verse seven. Let my soul be at rest again. The Lord has been good to me. That's what we just talked about. Right. Let me be at rest again. So what if I was to say a lot of times when we're going through these, these things that, that just kind of seems like we don't know what's going on, it, what God is really trying to do is just to get us to this, hey, just relax. Just relax and trust me. Right. That that that's that's powerful. Cause, I mean, that that only comes from from experience. That only comes from from a built up trust. That that's. I mean, that there's a lot that goes into that. It's not easily done. It's not easily done, and a lot of people never get there. Right. And because they never get there, you know, you talk a lot about you don't understand if somebody really knows Jesus and this and that. Why why do they still live this way? Or why does this happen? That happens. Well, it's because there's certain experiences they haven't experienced yet. We've talked about that before. And so um, there, are, there are those who have not learned to throw their hands up. And and I would say that's part of what God is doing. So, you know, for me, I'm figuring out what God has for me to do in ministry is I'm quitting my job. I'm going into, into quote, full-time ministry. It may not be 40 hours a week, but I think you know what I mean by full-time ministry. And um, I don't know what that looks like. I'm trying to cover all my bases. I'm trying to be proactive. You know, I'm trying to, you know, what, what phone calls do I make? Do I pastor a church? Do I, you know, do I just uh, do some teaching in the church? Do I pop from church to church uh, when they need a pastor? What do I need to do? I got to get everything in a row. I got to get the website together. I got to get my business cards together. I got to make phone calls. I got to do this. I got to do that. By the time I do all that, I don't want to be a pastor. <laughs> right. I mean, because I already because I already know the story, right? I do all that, and that's just the beginning. The real the real work is when you actually go out and do it. And so, um, the camp place where I just throw my hands, I and I told Carmi, I just said, you know what? You know me. I I got to figure this all out, and I, and I and I want to give you answers, so you have peace of mind that I that I'm not some going on my Looney Tune mind of doing something and it's not God and all that. And I just saw I said, you know what? I can't do it anymore. I can't sleep. I, I, I'll be useless. Um, uh, I'll be unhappy. I just got to just go with the flow. And guess what? Then you go with the flow you, and you just be at peace. Right. So he says, the Lord has been good, been good to me. In verse 7, that's the other key to this psalm. You're going to see over and over again, it talks about the mercy of God and God being good to me. 
And I would say when you've experienced the goodness of God, when you've experienced God has been good to you, when you experience God has been merciful to you, when you experience that, that you should have paid a price for something that you did and you don't, when you experience the fact you should have had a loss of a relationship and you don't, when you experience that, you know, you should have been terminated and you weren't, or whatever it may be, and you know it was God that was on your side, you, you live life differently. And, and I would say what happens, the devil can tell you every lie about God there is, and it can only go so far because you know in your, know, in your knowing of your knowing, in your heart of your heart, and in, in your mind, that God is good to you. Right. And let me find out some of what God was good at. It's in verse 8, it says, He has saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. And so, again... There's a concept that God's the rescuer. Yep. He rescued me. He rescued me from me. Not just right. from us. He rescued me from me. My worst enemy is me, not others. Yep. Come on, most people don't die from other people. People die from themselves by the choices they make. Yep. By the overeating, by the drugs, by whatever it may be. They, they, most people kill themselves, not them being uh, killed by somebody else. The biggest enemy can be ourselves. Now, verse 9, I love this. There's, there's something powerful this. In verse 9, and so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. So, oh, this, this translation is, I, I like this one. I, I should say that before you get into it. It says, I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. There we go. There you go. I'll tell you that the last three or four days, I certainly, certainly do not feel like I've been a part of the living. I mean, not at all. And and when I read that, it's like, oh my gosh, I I am I I have I have been asleep. I have been isolated. I have I have not been amongst the land of the living. And if you're not among the land of the living, what happens? depression yeah so what so read verse 9 again the full verse i shall walk before the lord in the land of the living okay so i like uh i like this part i walk in the lord's presence right much better than walk before the lord because I, because there's something that i want to share about the presence of god but i like the second part right me too <laughs> because but here's the story if, if you're if you're walk, if you're walking in the presence of the Lord, you will be in the land of the living. Right. Because when you experience His presence, you want to live. And so I want to talk a little bit about that that presence, the Lord's presence. But before I do that, this this here this study is proving the fact it is good to read the Bible in different translations. Right. You know, you pick up a passage of scripture and you read it in one translation, you, and then you read that same passage in another translation. You pick up different different meanings, different concepts. They're all saying the same thing in reality. And you know, Rich, I, I got to say that uh, it, I've talked plenty of, uh, with you, and I mean, really, with a lot of people about my, my struggle with organized religion and, and trying to find a home in a church setting and making it a home you know and and part of that is with what you had said about you know being open to reading different translations and and one thing that the church that i was i I have been attending it's been a little off-putting because they're real judgmental and they're real adamant on only the king james bible and and if you bring up anything else in, in any other bible it's um you know it's instant like judgment and and tell me how wrong I am. Yeah, so um, I would tell anybody, I know people that love the King James Version. i got a friend that loves the King James Version, so he wants to church the King James Version because he grew up with it. That's what he knows. He knows the verses. He's got to memorize. So it's special to him, right? right. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? So then I, uh, the day before yesterday, I was talking to a pastor that I've got to know, uh, that's at a church that's King James only uh, in his preaching. And so I, I cannot stand King James only only churches, but 
I know this guy. He's a, he's a, he's a nice guy, right? He's a good pastor. And uh, so I start talking, and so I can joke with him a little bit because I know him. And so I joke to him, I says, because he's trying to get me to visit their church, and we're actually going there Saturday night to, to visit. And I says, but, you know, I'm going to go there, but I, it's going to be hard for me because if you see the translation I'm using, you're probably going to cast the demons out of me, and I don't want that to happen in front of everybody. Right. So he, he laughs, and he says, he says, now, come on now. He says, uh, I, may, I may preach out of it, and that may be the Bible I prefer, but he says, I want people to come to church, and I'm not going to let a translation stop them from coming to church. And he says, I certainly, he says, I might do it to you because I know you're going to have fun with you. He says, but if I got a person that doesn't know Jesus, and they come in and they have a Bible in their hand, I'm praising God they have a Bible in their hand. And I think that that's, that's the way that this church would be, but... It's more so the 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 close member to who I'm with, right? It, it's right. I mean it, it's it's you know we try to I try to talk Bible I try to talk God with this guy and and it's just um oh uh, be real careful about that because that's wrong you know it's like wow wow you just missed the entire concept you know I mean and that's the right. guy that I was talking telling you about that who right. I see struggling and stuff so. Right. Well, it explains more when you say King James only. That explains a whole lot to me, to be honest. And there's normally some legalism and it's involved in all that. And right. everything. So, so again, um, let's get back here. So it's verse 9, and I would walk in the Lord's presence. The concept of the Lord's presence would be also uh, uh, the, uh, the God's glory. And the concept would be that you have a sense that God is with you. And that comes when you're going back to what you say about being in a church. Honestly, that's one of the reasons to be in fellowship with believers in a church-type setting. Because here's the story. God's everywhere, and God's presence is everywhere, no matter where you're at. Okay? So uh, it's not that God only shows up in certain places. God's at the bar. He, he, he's everywhere. He's God. He's on the... He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. But in a fellowship of believers and with Christians, there's an atmosphere of people seeking God, worshiping God, all wanting to hear the word of God, and it creates an environment where, I'm, I'm going to say this is not doctrinated or anything, that God wants to hang out. And here's, and here's what I mean. Just think about it. Just, just take the natural sin. Where do you want to hang out? Do you want to hang out where people uh, really don't want to be with you? Do you want to hang out where, where people complain about you? I mean, or do you not want to be with people who love you? And so, it's, again, God is anywhere and everywhere, and he loves people and all that stuff. But he can manifest his presence. He can manifest his glory in an environment where it's not going to be mocked, where it's not going to be shamed, where it's not going to be hated. Am I, am I making sense at all? Oh, you make total sense. Yeah, and then, uh, for whatever reason, that's just a concept that 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 I I forget. I forget. I'm constantly forgetting because you know it, I think my my brain starts working and you know some some old prejudices come up and it's I'm I'm finding everything that's wrong and I forget that oh right. But amongst all that, you know, I mean certainly that I felt the presence of God. So I, I totally understand 100. percent and, and I don't, and I'm not, I'm not trying to build a doctrine about the presence of God and this, this non a formula and all that kind of stuff. That's the danger with me. I, I give examples that I try to make it so it's understandable, but I don't want to be listening to I'm not building some false doctrine about the presence of God. That's not it. I'm just giving some symbolism to get an idea of, of where we're at, and, and in the sense that I believe that God is holy, and you honor His holiness. And I think that if you're a legalistic, rigid group of people in a church, is I don't think God's going to bless rigidness, legalism, judgmentalism. I don't think God's going to bless that by his presence. And I will build a doctrine off of that because it, it's, it's going against everything that's God's character. He's not going to, he's not going to uh, 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 encourage uh, an environment that's everything against his character. 
Right, that makes total sense. And, and and I believe he actually withdraws his presence. And you can go into the Old Testament. You know, we get into all this stuff where we can do 10 different Bible studies. But if you go into the Old Testament, there is a place in times where God's presence is there, and at times he's one. And when the nation of Israel rebelled against God, then what happened, there's a word called Ichabod. And the word Ichabod means the spirit is left. There was a time in the Old Testament in the moment of Israel's uh, history that God left. And there can you I? Know, there was can a I, physical manifestation of God. I mean, you actually can see God. God's presence, not see God. See is the manifestation, and it lasts. Can, yeah. can I ask you a question on that concept? Yeah. So, so when I rebelled against God, and and I'll, I mean, I'll go ahead and say is, I mean, you know, the last three or four days, I've certainly been rebelling against God, right? I mean, I, I uh, for whatever reason, I, that's just been me, and that's where I've been. Is, is it fair to say that in a way? Because and I have not felt God's presence the last three or four days, and and I, and, and I understand. But what this reading is saying is, you know, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Righteous, yes, our God is compassionate, right? right. So, but if I'm if I'm in rebellion, and, and you know, and if it's in God's history to leave the rebellious, is it fair to say that you know when? amongst when, or when i'm in rebellion that god's just going okay man you go for it <laughs> you know i'm gonna leave and i'll be i'll be back here when you're ready yeah yeah i i would say there's a balance okay because he is merciful he's gracious and he understands doesn't he right he understands what you're going through if he's merciful and compassionate he understands that now i say there's a balance in it and we'll and we'll wrap up with this. There's a balance in it, in, 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 and I would say here's kind of a, a concept that you can look at. I believe things on earth can be symbolic of what's in heaven. I believe that, that God uses life, everyday life, and uses that to show, to give us some concepts of who he is to help understand him. He has to. To be totally righteous in the, and he's just God that, that's beyond imagination, he has to use what we experience on earth to give us some understanding of them, or we'd be helpless, right? Right. And so out of it, one example is our relationship with Christ is symbolic as the relationship between husband and wife. But why is marriage so important to God? Because marriage is symbolic of a relationship with Christ. In the marriage, the husband and wife are united together. They don't cheat each other. They're in unity. They're in oneness. Okay? And there's no... They don't, they're not jealous of each other. They love each other. They respect each other. You have the sexual union going on. Powerful. The intimacy that is there. And God says we are the body of Christ, that we are, are the, the bride, and he's the bridegroom. And he wants that relationship with us as Christians. That's why he doesn't want us chasing other religions. That's why he doesn't want us in blatant sin, because it breaks that intimate relationship that we have. And so... Uh, out of all that, then I would say there's other things. So if I if I have a, a child and my child is flipping the finger at me, then I don't want to spend a lot of time with my child. No. <laughs> Do I still love them? Yes. Do I still save them if they ride in front of a car? Yes. But am I going to buy them a car? No. <laughs> Unless I'm a dysfunctional parent. Right. So my God would be dysfunctional to honor your rebellion. Right. And so there's a, the catch-22, and then there's a the bigger picture in it. What you're going through passed through God's hands, and he has a purpose for all of this. Now, I'll, I'll tell you what I think. Based on what you shared with me just before we got on this uh, Bible study and what you're sharing now in the Bible study, I, I personally believe that your tool being used I'm going to cry about this. Leave your tool being used by God. The text has more meaning to those who are listening to this Bible study. You cut out, Rich. You're going to have to repeat that. I... <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so I personally believe that part of what you're going through is for you to be a tool used by God to touch other people's lives. You said before we got in this Bible study that you really didn't want to do it and your flesh would like it to be canceled, but you knew it, we needed to have it because you know you needed it. You have shared during this Bible study that you've been in a funk and 
you know, all this stuff with everything else. I would argue that part of the reason you probably went through this is so that, one, this passage has a lot more meaning to you than it would. Two, is whoever listens to this Bible study is going to have a lot more meaning to them because you're sharing the very things that you're going through is some of what this is talking about. And instead of being in pity, instead of being in sorrow, you're having starting to have the joy of the Lord because right. of the Bible study. Absolutely. So what should you do when you're in the pit? Probably do a Bible study when you don't want to. <laughs> See, this is the great thing is that I've just been here so many times and I know that I need help. I know that I'm simple, and I know that I can't do this on my own, and that I must have God's help in in this. You know, I mean, I, I, exactly what He's talking about. It's like I, I I've been here, and the pain, the pain of the, the 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 depression has just gotten to be so great that I was finally willing to throw out my arms and just say, "Okay, God, you go for it. I'll call Rich and see see where it goes." And I mean, I'm even in doubt. So, so, and you didn't know what Bible study we were doing. No clue. <laughs> no, clue. no clue whatsoever. Yeah, I promise so, this was not set up. <laughs> and so for, yeah, that's, that, see, I believe that. And and this is what happens when there's God set up, God, is, then you sense his presence. You see, then it's not just knowing he's there because he's everywhere. It's, it, knowing he's there because he just intervened on your behalf. And, right. I, and I think, as we got to close my second closing, and then there'll be maybe a third or fourth closing, but is I I I I believe so much in the power of the presence of God, and I think it's so lacking in churches. I think it's so lacking in a lot of a lot of denominations because they're fearful of it. Because there's people who talk about the presence of God and they get fruity, they get weird, they get strange. Okay, and and, and God's presence isn't strange. It isn't weird. It's glorious. It's dramatic. It's powerful. And God, God, God's presence is going to bring you to holiness. It's not going to bring you the opposite way. And I just believe that when you, when you, when you, when you taste the goodness of God, you experience the presence of God, it's a lot easier to get out of the pit than if you have it. That's right. I can say that, I mean, <clears throat> this whole morning, I was, I was, I was, the only thing I was praying for was that I got called off of work because um, I was sitting here and I was I was terrified, I, I, I over nothing. I don't know why I was so afraid. I I was so afraid to get up and look people in the eyes, right? I mean, I was just feeling like this guilt and shame, I guess. And it's really hard to look someone in the eye. And I was just praying, like God. Just, I mean, not even to God. I was just really hoping that that was that you know I was going to get a phone call saying I don't have to go into work, so I don't have to go deal with all that stuff because I knew it was going to be a struggle. And it's like, God, a, a quarter of the way into this, I'm already, I got energy. I mean, I, I feel the presence of God again. And it's like all that fear is gone. It's like, God, here's God, here God is, a compassionate God. You know, despite despite myself has intervened on my behalf and done something that I could not do for myself. And, and now I'm I'm good to go. I'm, 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 I, I feel hope again. I mean, that fear is gone. I feel like I can go and look someone in the eyes and, it's gone. And what if I just say you also just describe what the definition of what compassion would be? Right. Like, it says that God is compassionate. But what's his compassion? He, he takes us right where we're at, knows where we're at, knows that we're, quote, in rebellion. And there's a difference between rebellion where you're at and rebellion. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gamble all my money away. I'm going to drink my money away. I'm going to go have sex and everything else. That's a different kind of rebellion than a rebellion of, I just don't want to talk to you, God, because I'm mad. Okay? <laughs> right. big, big difference. Okay. So he, he, he compassion is he sees you in, quote, rebellion. He sees you not doing the things you know to do that can get you better. He sees you in this pity party. When you're a follower of Christ, you don't need to be. No follower of Christ has to be at a pity party, Okay. You got you got the most powerful being in, in all of the universe that it, he can snap his fingers and change your life in an instant. There's no reason to be in a pity party, okay? Right. But you are. He sees all that, and then he intervenes. And out of compassion, he doesn't just put his arms around you. This is God's compassion. 
He just doesn't put his arms around you. He just doesn't give you a burger. But he speaks life into you that takes you to a whole nother level in life that will carry you on the next time you're in the pit. Absolutely. That's powerful. That's Super what, powerful. That's what this psalm is all about over and over and over again. It's about the fact I'm in the pit, God gets me out. I praise God. I'm in the pit, God gets me out. I praise God even more. To the point at the end of this psalm, you're nothing but a praising worship machine for him. Right. Because there's nothing else you can do. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, and it's not enough. And, and what happens is not enough. You want to do more. And that's where ministry comes in. And I, and, and, and I will end with this, uh, is that the number one reason I'm so sold out of ministry, the number one reason I will quit, quit a, a good paying job and, and, and do stuff that I know I already have been through the ministry stuff. I know the, the, the challenges, the heartaches, and all the other stuff. The reason is because I see the need out there, and I have the compassion for the people. And I know this, that some people's lives will be changed, and it makes me feel like there's something I am doing that shows my God the gratitude because Psalm 116 was my life. Right. It was my life. I'm lucky to be alive. And how dare me not honor him and serve him, die for him, sacrifice for him, for what he has done for me. And it doesn't take somebody to bribe me to do that. Right. <laughs> it does take God to bribe me because I, I will have to confess. I wasn't planning on doing all this while people to Arkansas, okay? Uh, it does take them. This is Preacher Rich. Do you want to gain the victory over your sinful nature? Do you want to have an eternal life? You can be transformed and have eternal life through Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior. Romans 3.23 says, For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. John 3.7 says, You must be born again. In other words, a change must take place in your life. A change that you are incapable of making happen. But God Almighty can make that change your life through Jesus Christ. Romans 10.13 says, Whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Acts 16.31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. What will you be saved from? You'll be saved from damnation. You'll be saved from hell that you can have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Mark 1.15 says, Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel message is that we are all sinners and need a Savior. Jesus is the Savior for all who call upon him. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will come into him. Is God tugging or knocking on your heart? If so, how about asking Jesus to become your Lord and Savior? Or maybe you would like to know more about the things of God. Learn more by going to creatingfutures.net. That is creatingfutures.net. You've been listening to There Is Hope, and any advice or counsel given was provided for informational purposes only. 